Hello, you're watching James. My name's James. You're watching me, and I'm talking about watches. Today, I just want to do a quick video review of my Uncle Seiko bracelet that I purchased for my Seiko Pogue, the 6139 series. I got this Pogue from my father. He sent it over to me. He'd been sitting in a box for many years. It was quite destroyed. It didn't have a bracelet or a band with it. I'd had it restored, and I really wanted to give it something good to put it on. Now, if you're like me and you've got a Seiko Pogue and you are looking for a nice bracelet for it, that may be why you're watching this video. And if so, Uncle Seiko has a number of options for you. They've got a H-Link bracelet without any taper. They've got a H-Link bracelet with taper, which is the one that I ended up going with. So what I'm going to do is review this H-Link bracelet for my Seiko Pogue from Uncle Seiko with the taper. But I wanted to say before I do that, is that this is the only Uncle Seiko bracelet that I've had any hands-on experience with. I can't tell you for a matter of fact that this review will represent all of their bracelets, but I really wanted just to show off what I got. And if you are looking to buy something from them, this might give you a little bit of a guide of what they're like. I really wanted to do a review of this bracelet because when I went to buy it a few years ago, there wasn't that many reviews online about Uncle Seiko and specifically about the bracelet that I bought. So I thought it'd be good to get some information out there on YouTube, since I have a watched YouTube channel about this bracelet. But let's jump into it now. I'm gonna do a review of the bracelet and let's flip the camera around to do that review. This is my Uncle Seiko tapering H-Link bracelet that suits Seiko models 6139, 600, and then whichever model that you have. Now it cost me 69 US dollars plus postage. It worked out to be about 100 Australian dollars. Firstly, I want to show you that it does come with hollow end links. They do fit fairly well with the case of the watch. It's not perfect. There is a little bit of a lip here, but there's not much movement whatsoever. Now, it also did come with solid end links, but there was a warning that they may not fit, and they absolutely did not fit this watch, not even a little bit. So I'm not sure why they bother giving it to me. The bracelet starts with these female end links, which is nice because then it just drops away directly from the case. You'll see then it actually comes out wider, fitting in with the shape and flow of the case, and then tapers down to the clasp. Now the lug width of this watch is around 18 millimeters. It tends to sit slightly more than that when I was measuring it. And as I mentioned, the actual Uncle Seiko bracelet starts a little bit wider, and it starts at 21 millimeters and tapers all the way down to 16 millimeters which is quite nice because it really gives you, as I said, that flow from the watch, but also makes the bracelet feel a little bit more substantial. The bracelet has this light brushing throughout, including on the sides and underneath. The bracelet is made up of these little H links with the little in-between links, and it's held together with split pins. It comes with this signed Uncle Seiko friction lock clasp, Unfortunately, it is pressed steel. It doesn't feel particularly great, but it certainly does the job. Even though it's just a friction lock, it certainly feels secure on my wrist. And it comes with these eight micro adjusts. So it really does mean that you are gonna get a good fit for this bracelet. So what do I like about this bracelet? I do like it that it obviously fits the watch. It is made specifically for this watch, so it does match in and it has those fitting end links. It is made of solid stainless steel, which is nice, but there's definitely a few negatives. And for 100 Australian dollars, I think I would have expected some more. If I'd bought any other bracelet, I'd be quite disappointed. However, because it's for a vintage watch and there aren't many options, then I'm willing to live with it. Certainly, it would have been nice to have solid end links. It would have been nice to have screw links. It would have been nice to have a milled clasp, which I think they certainly could have done. And also, even though it's solid stainless steel, it is very thin. It's only 2.5 millimeters thin, and when you've actually got it in your hand, it does feel a little bit thin. When you put it against some of these cheaper AliExpress bracelets that you can buy, they are definitely thicker and more fixture packed. And here it is on my six and three quarter inch wrist with obviously my Seiko Pogue. I have to say, even though I believe it was a little bit overpriced, it does feel good that it matches the watch itself and fits in with that whole vintage vibe of it. Well, that's all I've got to say about this particular Uncle Seiko bracelet. 
I really hope that you've enjoyed watching this. If you haven't already subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you did so. And I do hope to see you in the next video. See you later.